Greetings, everyone. It's great to be with you. Great to be learning with you once again. Thank you so much for joining us. Our presentation today is entitled On the Laws of Life 11, The Law of Creativity. The law of creativity helps us to be fully alive and healthy. Indeed, it is a law that we are obligated to apply in order to be of service and to fulfill our mission in life. And to inspire us for our presentation today, I'll get ready a slide to show you now. You'll see before you now a scene that's actually within the Grand Temple of the Rosicrucian Order Amarch, Rosicrucian Park, San Jose, California. The walls inside the Grand Temple uh, have a quickly special iconographic program that is a program of their symbolism. The walls are the temple are ornamented as in antique times and in uh, or antiquity in the medieval period and other time periods with quite exquisite murals in various wondrous colors. After those of the book of the coming forth by day um, in the ancient Egyptian text with our on our rebirth, as well as depicting authentic scenes of life and customs and spiritual traditions of ancient Egypt. Diana Ove Sawyer, who's a former, former staff artist of the Los Angeles County Museum and a member of the Rosicrucian Order Amwork, was selected to direct the staff of artists on this project. The temple itself was dedicated on July 17th, 1949. The law of creativity was applied in a variety of ways of setting out these murals under Sora Salyer's uh, expert guidance. Now, at certain times in our lives, we may have a special call for service from the order or through other means, and it behooves us to accept it and then feel the, the creative forces of the cosmic moving through us as we rise to the occasion on the cosmic keyboard and in attunement. I'll mention a few things about the inspiring symbolism of this particular artwork and mural that will assist us to rise up into the cosmic for our meditation period. And then we'll continue with our meditation after the meditation with our presentation on the law of creativity. Now on the temple's west wall, this is again the Grand Temple in Rosicrucian Park, near the Matras, uh, station, we see a beautiful mural called Laying On of Hands. It's designed after uh, descriptions uh, from earlier times of ancient, the ancient Egyptian period. It shows the divine essence of the deities known as Sa, that's a capital S-A in translated English, was said to be imparted by the high priest who knelt before him. The same form of lying on hands was used in conferring kingship or sovereignship or queenship. This mural was therefore taken indirectly from an ancient Egyptian stele describing Queen Hatshep Sitz receiving from her father the sovereignship of both banks of the River Nile. The incense burner held above candidate, you'll see up here, for example, uh, closely resembles an ancient artifact in the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum, or you may have seen in some other um, museums in the world. One of the beautiful things about this work of art is it reveals in a profound way some of the special teachings of the Rosicrucian order through our weekly monographs and exercises. We learn a variety of methods of healing and when to apply them and the proper ethical use of them. In a little while, we'll apply a method of healing called metaphysical aid. Here we'll see in a way uh, before us something that's closely related to what Rosicrucians call contact healing, where we use the vital life force and the flow, especially as charged in our bodies through special exercises to help with the healing of ourselves and, and of others. In a way, it's beautiful about the Rosicrucian teachings that not only do we talk about and describe things, but we do them. So now, let us apply what we've seen before us. 
The concept of the sovereign is one that's very beautiful for, for us. And we've talked about it in these department instructions, uh, teleconferences before, because in a way, in its deepest sense, it conveys the divine within, the mastership, the inner sovereign that's always within us, of which outer sovereigns were but an early lesson for humankind in its involvement and, and attainment. We're all called to divine sovereignship, are all called to be self-masters. So taking the scene a little more and its profound symbolism, which I've touched on in various points, you may wish to sense increasingly the divine flow of the vital life force through your body. And when you're ready, I invite you to sit in your chair or lie down or be situated however is best for you in your meditation. And let's just enjoy the gentle rhythm of breath. And like the Pharaoh, Shepshut, will enter a cosmic attunement in the receiving of the vital life force. And it's increasing recognition within us. And when you're ready, you may close your eyes and let us take deep neutral breaths, neither holding the inhalation nor holding the exhalation. Just enjoy the exhilaration of the experience. Just as we've looked at a beautiful scene of a mural in the Grand Temple, the Rosicrucian Park. So we're concentrating now on the holy temple that is our body, that mirrors the Grand Temple and all temples of the world. But also mirrors as a microcosm, the macrocosm, the very mighty temple of the cosmos the divine temple. All these things are interlinked in a highly meaningful comprehension of life and way of living revealed through our Rosicrucian weekly studies and exercises. Just enjoy your birthright to experience the exhilaration of the flow of the vital life force. At first, you may feel it as a wonderful tingling sensation in your Extremities of your body, such as your tips of your fingers and your toes. But gradually, as we do the neutral breath, either holding the inhalation or the exhalation, and I suggest breathing a little deeper than usual. And I suggest too that you extend your exhalation more than your inhalation. You'll feel the vital life force increasingly flowing through your body, just like Pharaoh. Hatshepsut is receiving the vital life force. So we become increasingly aware of it. This can be a valuable exercise too when we do our own healing exercises that were taught through the order to charge ourselves, rejuvenate ourselves with both polarities of the vital life force. And a very beautiful and wonderful thing happens as we extend our exhalation. It automatically activates the relaxation response by stimulating the great vagus nerve in our body that we learn about through our teachings and through other studies. And one of the major things that are needed to be relaxed and calm is it allows us to heal. We're not relaxed or calm. We retard the healing process. And our healing is important to make ourselves whole. So not only are we healed, but we can assist in the healing of all others. All expressions of life. If you find your mind wandering, just lovingly and gently bring it back to the gentle rhythm of the breath. There's a rhythm in all things, for all things manifest through vibration, spoken of by the Rosicrucians as the great cosmic keyboard, higher and higher octaves of vibration. And we come to know all through vibrations impinging themselves on our consciousness, either within, without, through the objective consciousness, or in the cosmic mind, to the subconscious mind, subjective or sub subconscious, 
of conscious. And ultimately, from within and without to our subjective consciousness. And mastering these different le levels of consciousness, we come into the mastery of life. But all are imbued by the cosmic consciousness. All are expressions of it. Cosmic consciousness we're seeking now and enlivening through our meditation is the consciousness of the cosmic. The cosmic is a very beautiful concept, idea, and ultimately experience of the universal intelligence back of the cosmos. And the full knowledge and operation of all natural and spiritual laws. Just continue to enjoy the gentle rhythm of the breath and increasing experience and sensitivity to the vital life force. You may feel have an experience of becoming lighter. In a way, it's like the master Rosicrucian Jacob Bohm describing the human being as fundamentally a being of light. Let us have an experience of that. As we gently breathe and charge ourselves with a vital life force, the tingling particularly comes from its positive polarity, the cosmic essence. These are all things we study in detail through our weekly lessons of the Rosicrucians been passed down since time immemorial. We'll continue our meditation now by following the instructions of the booklet Lieber 777 that we'll give you a reference to later in the presentation. It's a good booklet to be, continue to be quite familiar with and keep reviewing. For as we grow and mature, so our understanding of that text will grow and mature. It was based on cosmic experience of past imperator H. Spencer Lewis and his initiators. We enter into experience the celestial sanctum and the consciousness of the cosmic. Let us apply the law of purification. I invite you to say with me now the following prayer and invocation. May the divine essence of the cosmic infuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may enter the celestial sanctum in a tune in pureness and in worthiness. So mote it be. Now I invite you to rise up where you're situated using all your psychic faculties and imaginative capacity. Picture yourself rising up from your home or dwelling and building and see below you the neighborhood or geographic area where you are and keep rising up faster and faster, enjoying the exhilaration of the ascent. And see yourself over your town or village or city, and the landforms below, and continue to rise up. Seeing below you the county where you dwell and the landforms, even now the province or state where you dwell, the seashore and the lake shore, the desert, the farmlands, the hills, the mountains, the lakes, seas, whatever is applicable to your locale, and continue to rise up and start to take in not only your province or state, but the entire great nation or country where you dwell. See its landforms and the weather systems. As we rise up faster and faster, take in now the entire continent where you dwell, and even the entire hemisphere, and now the entire late spheroid of the earth, the great 
fall or sphere, beautiful blue jewel rotating about its axis while the moon revolves about it. Notice the great harmony and beauty of it. Part of the great rhythms of the cosmos working in harmony. Look up and take in now the entire solar system, the great fiery ball of the sun, our local star, and the great elliptical orbits, the huge planet Jupiter, and the ring planet Saturn, and the smaller planets such as Mercury, Mars, and Venus, and feel the vibrations coming from them, both physical and psychic in nature. And return them back and sending to them likewise in a harmonious relationship their great home and temple of the solar system. Let us look up and see more of our situation, the Milky Way galaxy, the myriad stars and nebulae, asteroids, interstellar gases, and keep rising up faster and faster, way beyond the speed of light as we transcend space and time now. Continue to enjoy the exhilaration of the ascent life force within us and all around us. Passing by star after star at tremendous speed, nebula after nebula at tremendous speed. Since the presence of the black hole is helping balance the universe. Since the great spiraling arms of our Milky Way galaxy as we exit from this great body and look back at its beauty and harmony. And since now, and all the physical vibrations, but all the psychic vibrations of the universe, the great sea of vibrations, the music of the cosmos, the divine temple, continue to rise up faster and faster. And we'll apply the law of correspondence, for as we rise up, we go deeper and deeper within ourselves and into the cosmic and deeper into the experience of the divine mind within where they mirror each other and are imbued in each other. Pass by more galaxies, some spiraling like our local home, the Milky Way galaxy, and some in other shapes, and even great clusters of galaxies. And even beyond that, clusters after clusters of galaxies, super clusters of galaxies, there are collections of galaxies. They continue faster and faster recently experiencing the co consciousness of the cosmic. So we experience the tremendous vastness of the cosmos. It suggests to us by the law of suggestion, the vastness on the infinite plane that's within us. As we continue, we'll start to sense the cosmos as a whole. Indeed, as a great rotating body, rotating about a great cosmic axis, spoken of by ancient times, and even studied by modern astronomers and astrophysicists today. As you come closer and closer to that great cosmic axis about which all rotates, zoom towards its midpoint. As you get closer and closer to it, slow up, and for a time, just take in the inspiring magnificence all around you in the cosmos. I invite you now to follow the instructions of Libra 777 by picturing there your personal celestial sanctum, which you may simply wish to be on this occasion cosmos all around you, mirroring the microcosm that you are. Or some special sacred place such as the Grand Temple at Rosicrucian Park and that we spoke of before with its beautiful murals. Or maybe some special temple on earth to you, a synagogue, a mandira, a stupa, a cathedral, a basilica or church, a mosque, or some other form of temple, or maybe some other inspiring place in nature, a sacred grove of trees, 
spot by a seashore or a high vista from a mountain, all suggestive of expansive view of the cosmic that we're partaking of now. Fill in the sights and sounds, all levels of the cosmic keyboard, psychic and physical. You may wish to picture incense rising up as we saw in our mural at the Grand Temple, just as we rose up to the heights of the celestial sanctum. Your beautiful music, beautiful murals or stained glass windows around you depicting those accretion of mystical laws and principles. Other seekers on this conference call with us, the officers of our order, the Grand Masters and the Imperator may be conducting a sacred convocation. The invisible, invisible masters, let us be one with them as we increasingly be receptive and surrender to the divine within the heights of the celestial sanctum, the center of our being. Let us apply the law of silence now to increasingly center and surrender. Be receptive to the divine within our true nature and guide. I invite you to increasingly identify your mind with the cosmic mind. Experience as the cosmic mind experiences. Be the cosmic mind. Assume the cosmic mind now. So we assume to be one with the one, being the cosmic mind, experiences the cosmic mind, experiences. We'll soon apply the law of service in addition to the continued application of the law of cosmic attunement. The cosmic mind that is joined with the silent council conjunction with the Council of Solace, the Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Order Amwark, to radiate love and well-being to all those who have petitioned the Grand Lodge for guidance and healing, and radiate love and well-being to all those who have petitioned our affiliate bodies of the Rosicrucian Order Amwark for guidance and healing, and all those you know who are in need guidance and healing, radiate love and well-being to them. And indeed, the perspective of the cosmic mind, radiate love and well-being to all sentient beings throughout the cosmos, great temple of the divine, who are in need of guidance and healing. Just picture the rays of love and well-being going out from you like a great spotlight, a great flowing of water throughout the cosmos. First, you can use great inner spiritual energy as we rose up into the cosmic to get the flow going. Gradually, I think you'll find without conscious effort that one in the cosmic mind will continue to flow in a most exhilarating way. 
even speed up and you know you're making contact through the cosmic mind. Connected to all. Soon we'll formally conclude our period of work of sending the physical aid, but we'll continue a while longer our period of meditation. Now assured that this flow of love and well-being will continue as a way of life, as part of our mission and purpose. Let us formally conclude by saying, if it pleases the cosmic, it is done. So mote it be. Let us continue a while longer to be one with the cosmic mind. Feeling rejuvenated, remade, reinvigorated. Now soon we'll begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Having applied many Rosicrucian laws and principles, such as the law of cosmic attunement, the law of service, the law of humility, the law of creativity through our visualization, to name a few. This time you may wish to invoke the law of gratitude, show our appreciation, for all those who have taught us well, for all those who have sacrificed for us, for all those who have helped us in the lessons of life. Now let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum, moving at tremendous speed, way beyond the speed of light, enjoying the exhilaration of the descent. Keeping with us, though, the cosmic consciousness state in all that we do. Past the myriad stars and superclusters of galaxies and clusters of galaxies, and nebulae, and asteroids, rogue planets, black holes helping balance the universe. Past the wonders of it all, the beautiful music of the cosmos. As myriad stars, see in the distance the great spiraling galaxy, our home, the Milky Way galaxy, and plunge into it as we proceed past myriad stars and nebula, and see way in the distance our solar system, our great home in this laboratory of the cosmos. As we come close, the great fiery ball of the sun the beautiful blue jewel of the earth. Let us return to the hemisphere where we left off, the continent, the great nation, country where we dwell, our province or state, our county, 
city, town, or village, or geographic area, our neighborhood. Let us say before we conclude, may God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum. So mote it be. Let us continue our descent in our home or dwelling or building, the room where we left off, however we're situated. And when we're ready, we wish to open our eyes, stretch, feeling remade, rejuvenated, rested, re-energized, carrying the cosmic consciousness awareness all the more with us through our different phases of consciousness. Great. Thank you, everyone. We'll continue now on our presentation on the laws of life 11, the law of creativity, which we've applied through the experience of that beautiful artwork by Diana Bove Sawyer, a Ruskushan student, and the great conception, the concept of the temple, including the Grand Temple in Ruskushan Park, all applying the law of creativity. Now, as mentioned earlier, the law of creativity allows us to be fully alive and healthy. And what I'm about to tell you, I'm appreciative of the teachings of the Rosicrucian Aura Amwork, the weekly lessons, and also the insights of psychologists, such as a colleague of mine, Professor Paul Ritvo. You know, we applied the law of gratitude before we descended from heights of celestial sanctum. It's a great law to always keep before us, no matter what because it'll help us to see things are true, a more mature perspective of the inner self. Indeed, you can apply the law of gratitude for the opportunity to be created and apply the law of creativity. Indeed, we can encourage for ourselves and others to be creative wherever suit suitable. One of the important things about the law of creativity is it allows us to get unstuck and to recognize, free up and transform what is suppressed within us. Indeed, one of the special things about meditation, including what we just did, it helps us to be more creative. It boosts our creativity. As we let go in meditation, we let go of the status quo. It may be of serving us and others well in the past, but no longer is, or may never was, have been. And meditation allows us to let go so we can return from the meditative period to in a more integrated state so all our faculties are working together and things that appear to be challenges no longer are or much easier to be surmounted and even with a sense of joy in addition to the relief. Also, meditation allows us to tune with the cosmic and all, all knowledge and all love to see things anew and to take that as a new way of living and creativity. Indeed, in meditation, we are open to novel thoughts, as psychologists say, or as in the Rosicrucian tradition, we say the intimations of the divine within. This allow us to maturely reframe our interpretation of our experiences in lives. And as Dr. H. Spencer Lewis encouraged us to, to embrace the lessons of life. And then crucially, when we have the lesson to act on them so we can get up unstuck out of a rut and not resist lessons of life and thereby remain stuck. Fortunately though, through the laws of the cosmic and the cosmic's action, and even if we resist lessons, the cosmics will help us give rise in our life to a crisis, which is a major opportunity for learning. However, it's best and most harmonious to embrace lessons as they come up. And there's many daily when we're vigilant on the lookout then our living is flowing with comprehension, expression, and reception. Even minor creativity is not to be downplayed. It's important. And we need to apply it for recognition and encourage others in applying. Indeed, as psychologists have known and studied, and as Rosicrucians have known over the centuries, creativity is associated with positive mood. Indeed, creativity is important to mental health our mental health, by expressing our emotions, our thoughts, by being more fully ourselves, not suppressing or bottling up the, our emotions, our thoughts, 
expressing as proper, yes, and then on yourself will guide us in that. But that's so important. It takes a lot of energy to be not who we are. We may have felt in the way we were being raised that we had to act in a certain way. But as we mature and grow, we can transform or transmute that experience of not being who we are to being who, who we are. It's a bit like the gong in our temples. If the gong is covered over by cloths and materials, it will be dampened when it's wrong. But as we free ourselves up, cloths come off the gong, it starts to ring resoundingly. We're all the more able to express our true nature, the divine within. We more easily have a constant rapport with the cosmic, ultimately in the state of mystical union. Indeed, we feel healthier when we are creative, applying the law of creativity, and life takes on more meaning. The Lutzkushans have a term for this type of flow in the sense of meaning, it's called harmonium. It's a beautiful term of harmony on all levels of our being and all our interactions in the temple of the cosmos and our surroundings with those who are with us. Harmonious development of working in harmony with our environment, not abusing it, but realizing the great gift that it is and that we are fundamentally in one part of it, one with it. In this manner, we are called to be co-creators with the cosmic, co-partners, co-agents. But you notice the term creator is used in there. We have the entire creation uh, is a wonderful example to us in our own. As past Grandmaster Robert E. Daniels emphasized, we are called to do the best that we can in everything we do, whether it's our eating, our interacting, our presenting, whatever tasks we have daily, um, Whatever we do, we're called to do the best. And one important part of that we learned for our lessons is mental creation. Again, there's that word associated with the verb to create and the law of creativity or visualization, which we applied with our uh, meditation today. We learned lessons for, indeed, the Grand Temple was a visualization. Past Imperator H. Spencer Lewis and past Imperator Ralph Van Lewis and others. In visualizing, we're actually acting as co-creators with the cosmic mind, just as this world was brought into creation through visualization, the word going forth. So we're applying the same principle in visualization in our own lives. And the Rosicrucians give us detailed lessons on how to visualize. In a way, we applied that in our meditation today. Now, our contact with others, for example, our contact with children is important because we can observe, for example, in children, creativity and action, and increasingly creativity being developed in beautiful ways. And we can encourage that in children, not only as parents, but as persons in contact with children and others. And in this way, we come into some of the many wonderful lessons of life that we observe through children's learning of them and others and our own. As Ralph and Lewis, past imperator, emphasized, you know, after meditation, there can be an influx for usable colloquial term, a rush of new ideas and energy to do and to accomplish, because we get the ideas to apply them, to make them harmonious in our, envir in our environment. And as we make our environment far more harmonious, it assists others to attune with the cosmic. There's a beautiful reinforcing circular action going on. Also, after meditation could be a special time to have a dialogue with the inner self, the master within. But we can at any time turn within and our practice of meditation allows us to more easily turn inward and sense the presence of the inner self. And our purity of experience in meditation allows us to know that we're communicating with the inner self. Our conscience, that inner guardian is heightened will know that we're in contact with the inner self through its beautiful constructiveness. And the inner self will always tell us only what we need to know at that time. <laughs> Sometimes it can be helpful, along with this practice of dialoguing with the inner self, to picture um, an adept, such as Sir Francis Bacon, or Teresa of Avila, or other masters, and have a conversation with them. And that'll draw us into the experience of conversing with the divine within 
that those masters and adept came into their expertise through by following the, the dictates the, in that manner, following their own master within, in other words. Now we need to have confidence and determination in this process and throughout our lives to receive the assistance of the cosmic. Just as in our meditation today, we use cosmic, the cosmic in a way commanding way. We used our confidence, we used our determination to tune with the cosmic and responded accordingly. The divine, the cosmic wants to see our integrity, our virtue and our seriousness and that we're doing what we can in our, through our outer selves to realize our inner self and have it increasingly soak up in our nature and truly realize ourselves as the divine within, expressing through the, the vessel, the holy temple and our senses. Now with the divine understanding, the law of creativity is applied in emulating the cosmic. From preparing a meal, lots of things you're doing today, planning a gathering, the design of our surroundings, artistic expression for sure, scientific investigation definitely, business acumen, very much so, and much more. The inner self, you see, is very accomplished. It loves to dance, it loves to laugh, it loves to sing, and all the expressions are, are harm, harmony. And our inner self, we would tune with it, it will help us with that. Often you'll find in ex illuminative experiences, you'll feel immediately the, the urge to express and create and to laugh and express love, share. These are our birthright. This is who we truly are. Indeed, creativity helps us to persevere, to mature and evolve in our individual lives. And we see this in humanity down through the ages as things apply the law of change and the law of creativity. Creativity helps us heal ourselves and others by the way we contact and work with ourselves and them. It also assists us in the healing of our environment and indeed helping us to work in harmony with all of nature. Creation, the handiwork of the divine, is the exemplar for our work. This is part of the great meaningfulness and the great signs that are around us for deeper lessons in life. Indeed, the fully developed creative spirit is one of the hallmarks of mature and healthy human beings. Ourselves as a creative mic microcosm, we are mirrored in the creativity of the cosmic, the macrocosm, which it shows in dynamic action and energy throughout the entirety of creation. So we're called to do that in our own sphere and increasingly identify with the consciousness of the cosmic and the creation of it. Whereas in the sense, when we come into that consciousness of the cosmic, which all our forms of consciousness are objective consciousness, subjective consciousness, subject, subconscious consciousness are all expressions of. We come to realize that the cosmic is within us and we are within the cosmic. There's this beautiful dual action with us. Before we conclude now, I'm going to invite Karen to paste in the chat with you. It'll be one paste and also to upload a PDF document for you with some resources for our presentation uh, today. And they're there, I'll give you some, I think you'll find easiest to download the PDF document if you're so inclined. So by way of conclusion, I will say that we have continued to explore Rosicrucian laws and principles and their application for self-mastery and service. We've done this by exploring today the law of creativity in particular which helps us to be fully alive. It allows us to get unstuck and to recognize, free up and transform what is suppressed within us. Then our living is flowing with comprehension, expression and reception. In this manner, we're called to be co-creators with the cosmic. With this divine understanding, the law of creativity is applied in emulating the cosmic, from preparing a meal, planning a gathering, design of our surroundings, artistic expression, scientific investigation, business acumen, 
and much more that you're involved with in your own unique ways, but all on a universal pattern. Creation, the handiwork of the divine within us and with around us, which we are, is the exemplar always for our work. Indeed, the fully developed and creative spirit is one of the hallmarks of the mature and healthy living being and one of the major signs of self-mastery. Thank you.